Right, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today I've got a few jobs to do on this Mark 4 Monday. I've since completing the major mechanical work, which was the clutch series, which I hope you guys enjoyed. There's a few things that I noticed on this car that could do with being replaced or just been shown a little bit of love um, that kind of let the car down and the way it looks and stuff, mainly cosmetic stuff. Right, so the first thing I pretty much noticed on this car when it arrived here was the ugly headlight. This driver's side headlight has obviously been suffering with um, the condensation for a while, you can see there's still some build up in there now and it's clearly had so much water in it at one point that it's just completely stained the inside of the lens there's a horrible orange stain in there and it's also taken up a bunch of the chrome and stuff that's on the inside of the headlight realistically this thing could be split apart and probably cleaned up and made to look fairly decent uh, but i've just bought a replacement headlight just because i found one at a fairly good price so i'm just going to replace the whole unit now one of the additional problems that i think has been caused by that water ingress into the headlight is this if i start the car up real quick you may be able to see that warning light right here it says front lights malfunction right there and i've got a feeling that that has got something to do and i need to service the oil as well that's just come up we will be doing a service on this but that's not going to be in this video um, i got a feeling that the water ingress in that headlight has caused that warning light to come on for the um, headlight malfunction now what seems to happen is this car has got let me just turn the car off you don't need to keep it on um <clears throat> what seems to happen is this car has got uh, adaptive headlights so when you turn the steering wheel the headlights actually pivot with the wheel so if you go around a corner the headlights will light up the corner that doesn't seem to work at the moment which i think is what has malfunctioned i am going to plug my scan tool in just to double check that but i think that that is the problem and i've got a feeling that the water ingress in the headlight is what is going to have caused that warning to be on there so that's another thing i'm hoping to fix one changing the headlight out i'm hoping that that headlight has just got corrosion or something on the plug and i can clean that up and get that working again okay so whilst i'm still sat in the car problem number two is this right here the wing mirror on the driver's side not only has it been smashed so you can see there's a big chunk being taken out of the side which looks horrible it doesn't actually function as it should i think when it got hit the motor inside of it might have taken a bit of a batter and it doesn't seem to work anymore there's a button on here which you press and the, mir the mirrors are supposed to unfold so if you look on the left hand side i'll press the button now you can see the mirror folds in mirror folds out if i press the button and look at this one the other one's folding in but this one is not doing anything so that bit of the mirror is broken. And also I was having problems the other day. It probably worked now, no me. No. I'm having problems with the adjustment. If I hold it, nothing. Hold it the other way, nothing. I'm not feeling this mirror is a bit sad and I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it. I found a second hand mirror on um, eBay. I think it was like 25 pounds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it. And I think it comes with the same color cap as well. So I don't think I'm even gonna have to change that. So that's good. So if we come around to the boot, you will see if I open this thing up you won't be able to smell it but as soon as you open up you get a smell of moisture in here and then you can also see that we've got some mold growing so there's definitely moisture in here and if you lift the carpet up and have a look under here at the spare wheel you can see lots and lots of water I want to figure out what's happening there where it's coming from I'm going to assume it's coming through one of the rear lights or maybe one of the lights on the boot this one here not entirely sure the boot seal and everything looks okay but there's quite a lot of moisture in there i want to figure out what's happening with that because that's not good to have moisture in your car things are going to start to rust it's never a good thing so we'll try and figure that out as well and then other than that i've basically just got a few sort of ancillary little bits and pieces to do um, like i said it's not very exciting not very thrilling it's not gonna be anywhere near as exciting as doing the clutch job but uh, i figured i'd take you along anyway Right, so here on the workbench are the bits and pieces that I've accumulated. As I said, it's not anything very exciting, but these are just bits and pieces that I noticed that whilst I was working on the car, that really could do with being replaced. Uh, the main thing being the headlight here, this is a replacement headlight for the one that I've got. I picked this up fairly cheap. These headlights are quite expensive because they are the, the fancy ones with the, um, what's, I can't remember what it's called now, adaptive headlights or whatever they are. So they move as you turn the steering wheel. So they are quite expensive. I managed to pick this one up as a bit of a steal. Um, so I've got that to replace. You can see it looks in a lot better shape than our other one. We haven't got the water marks and the ingress that the other one's got. Now, because the Mondeo seem to suffer with the ingress of water in headlights, I'm gonna take a step with this whilst it's out of the car that I wouldn't normally do, but I'm gonna do it on this one because I know that it can be a common problem. I picked up some of this stuff, which is a Loctite silicone sealant, and it is specifically designed to seal around headlights. 
So you can see there's a picture of a headlight there, there's ceiling around the outside. If you've got water ingress in a headlight, ideally what you'd want to do is split the headlight, remove this whole lens, um, take this off, and then put some new sealer in it and seal it back up. However, there is problems with that. You can end up damaging the headlight where they meet around here. So I'm not going to bother doing that. All I'm going to do is lay a bead of this around the headlight, just as it shows in the picture there. I'm going to lay a bead just where they join around here, squish it into the joint, just make a nice uh, smearing coverage all the way around the headlight. It's kind of just a preventative measure, um, just so that we don't get condensation in this headlight in the future. Now, I also picked up these things right here these are not necessarily needed however i thought they might be quite handy and they're terminal cleaners they're like got a little diamond file on the end of them and you stick these in the terminals of the headlights and the wiring on the car and you can clean out any corrosion and stuff and i'm hoping that this is going to fix our issue with the uh the light on the dash what i'm thinking is it's just going to be a dirty terminal and uh, just by cleaning it out with these that should hopefully fix the problem at least we'll give it a go paired up with that i've got some of this stuff which is a WD-40 fast drying contact cleaner, which is, this is designed for electrical products, as you can see in there, you can spray it on circuit boards, spark plugs, HDMI cables, and pretty much any electrical connector. Um, that's what it's designed for. So I'm gonna spray this in there as well, and hopefully clean up those contacts. So that's all sort of the headlight stuff right there, all four of those items. I have also got myself a wing mirror for the driver's side. Um, I think that this color is an exact match for what the car is i didn't even notice that i thought that this was darker it looked darker in the picture however i think this color is an exact match so so this wing mirror should be just a direct replacement um, i picked this up for like 30 pounds on ebay and uh, i'm hoping that it's going to be the right one for the car so we're going to fit that as well we've also got just a battery box my one when i took it off the car when i was doing the clutch this part here was just completely broken this little flap had broken off this was all broken in here so I picked up a new one on eBay, it's like 20 pound I think, and it comes with a whole lot, so I'll be fitting that as well just to tidy up the engine bay. I've also got a few little bits, like I bought some new wheel nuts. I've got some windscreen wipers in here. And then I've also got myself a new set of number plates. So these here were actually sent to me by a company. Um, I put on my Instagram that I was looking for some new plates for the Mondeo, because the ones that are on there, the rear one especially, is cracked in a couple of places. So I wanted to replace them just to tidy up the front and rear end a little bit. And a company called Roller Plates, I'll put their thing on the screen right here, their Instagram. Um, they, set, they sent me a message and they said, do you want us to hook you up some plates? Give me a registration and we'll send them out pretty much the next day, which they did. And these arrived, I think two days after I messaged them. Um, so fantastic delivery, just at that. So here, as you can see, I have got myself some nice shiny gel plates, these are. I wanted something that was fairly... Uh, simple i didn't want anything that was too flashy and too crazy they do a bunch of different variations of plates you've got uh, 4d uh, 4d crystal all sorts of different stuff carbon but i wanted something because it's just a mondeo kind of wanted something simple didn't want to go too crazy with it so i figured gel plates were the way to go you can see that they've got like a gel texture to them so the letters are slightly raised i don't know if you can see that you can the letters are slightly raised off the surface and they are uh, gel plates and they look a lot smarter, they're nice and clean, they haven't got the stupid um, EU badge on the side here, which I definitely didn't want on there. So we're going to be sticking these on as well. They sent me some uh, sticky pads to put on the back of these as well, I think they're in the package somewhere, wherever that went. So yeah, that's another thing to go on, new set of plates. So that is the plan for today. Um, like I said, it's not really anything too exciting, but it's all jobs that need doing, so I figured I would take you along with me. Now, before I can do anything, what I want to do is I'm going to seal up this headlight with this stuff because I don't know how long it takes to dry. Probably maybe an hour or so. It doesn't actually say on there. But I want to put this on and give it a little while to dry. So um, I'll get on with the other jobs whilst that's drying. I was just about to get started putting the silicone on this thing. And I've had a parcel arrive from Yum Cars themselves. I think I know what it is. I'll save that for another video. Right, so I've done a little bit of prep on this thing. I've basically just cleaned down the area, so all around where I'm gonna be putting the sealant, which is right here. I've basically just wiped it down with some, essentially, acetone. It's like a paint prep stuff, but you can use nail varnish remover or acetone, whatever you want. I've just done that to get rid of any grease and um, anything that's gonna stop the silicone from properly like sticking in. Um, so I'm now just gonna run a bead around this thing, push it in with my finger. I'm gonna try and get it into the little gap as much as I can. I don't know if you can see that little gap there i'm going to try and like smush it in um, but other than that I'm basically just going to lay a bead right on top of this 
all the way around, all on the bottom, and hopefully that'll do the job. Right, so I've sealed all the way around this now. I've uh, gone around the bottom, you probably can't even really see it that well because it's clear. But I've sealed all the way around the bottom, and then I've touched all the headlight. I'm gonna have to clean that off, but I've gone all around the top as well. I've made sure that I've got in every little nook and cranny, every little crevice to stop the potential of this one leaking in the future. Pretty happy with that. Just have to let it set now. So this headlight has been actually drying overnight. I left it for a good 12 hours and you can see this is our finished result like I said it's not looking very pretty um, this is not like designed to look good I just wanted to basically do the job of sealing up this headlight and I'm hoping it's going to do that it's dried really nicely it's got a nice rubbery texture to it I'm hoping that's going to be enough just to seal this thing up so that we don't have any issues in the future Okay, so these headlights are held in really easily. You don't have to remove the bump or anything like that. There's just one screw here, which you can use a flat blade screwdriver for. Another one down there. And then you do need to remove this little plastic screw right here. Um, and that allows you to pull the grill forward and the bumper so that you can just get enough wiggle room just to pull the headlight out. So let's, uh, let's give it a go. should be able to get this headlight out now. As a trick, I think you have to pull this forward a bit. This grill piece, like this. And then, do something with this bit. Like so. And see, look how much water's in there still. Check out how much water is still in this headlight, look. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a fish tank. That's crazy. That's definitely gonna be causing us some electrical issues I would have thought. All right, you've got to see this. <laughs> so as I said, ah, oh, this water's dripping on my foot. That's disgusting. So I just pulled the connector off the back and can you see that? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that is probably the cause of our headlight issue. You can see in there as well, manky connections. That's gonna to have to have a real good clean out. That's disgusting. So I'm hoping that this um, connector can be saved. There is, you know, there's a bit of rust in there, a little bit of corrosion. And it looks like maybe one of the pins has snapped off in this tiny little end one there. Can you see that? Looks like one of the pins off the headlight has got in there. But I'm going to give it a clean up, see what I can see. If I need to do any digging, I will. I don't know how, this would not be easy to replace because I think you'd have to do the whole loom or just cut the end off and put a new plug on. I don't really want to have to do that because that sounds like a nightmare. Hopefully this is salvageable and I can just clean it up and it'll work again. I can't get over the amount of water this I've never seen. A headlight with so much water in it's ridiculous there's another look at that plug as well you can see where the water's been seeping out of there and just corroding all the pins i think i was right in saying as well that that it looks like there's a pin that snapped off on this side and it looks like it's been stuck in the wiring harness on the car so i have to do something about that also on closer inspection you can actually see on this headlight i think where it's failed can you see how big of a gap there is between the black plastic there and the clear you can actually see in here where it's failed you can see through into the actual inside of the headlight in here so rainwater has obviously been just collecting in here and just going straight into the headlight so that's where it's not connected that's where it's not sealed okay so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here with my wd-40 fast drying contact cleaner and i give this plug a little bit of a spray and just try and get rid of sort of the majority of the gunk and stuff and just see what it looks like out underneath Oh, it smells like pfft. smells like brake cleaner tastes like brake cleaner as well don't ask me how i know so initially that's kind of cleaned up quite nicely um but this pin here the first the bottom right one that's definitely got a little piece of metal in there which is one of the pins off the headlight i can see it but i don't know if i've got anything small enough to dig that out without breaking it i need a little pair of needle nose really but or tweezers maybe i found this set of like properly skinny tweezers in my shed. I'm hoping they're gonna be small enough to do the job. Got it. 
don't know if you can, can you see that? That is a pin off the headlight that had rusted so bad and corroded so bad that it come off. And that, I mean, this, this would have never gone on properly if I didn't take that out. I'm just gonna go ahead and check the others and hopefully, hopefully they're all clear and uh, I can just go ahead and clean this up then. All right, so next up as part of the cleaning process, I've got these guys right here. Sealy three-piece terminal diamond grip cleaner set. Essentially what these are, they look like tweezers, but they've got a rough, like file-like end to them, which is diamonds by the sounds of it. And uh, you just stick them inside each pin and just clean them out. Any corrosion or anything will come straight off with these. And then I'll uh, blow it out afterwards and hopefully this plug will be salvageable. So this is what they look like. See, it just looks like a little tweezer. These are really expensive, but I guess that's because they've got diamonds on them. So I'm gonna let that dry for a few minutes and um, I'll go and grab the other headlight, plug it in, and we'll see if that has got rid of the light on our dash. My plan for this headlight was to restore it. I was gonna uh, split it open and clean it all out and everything, but the fact that the wiring connection was so bad that a pin had broken off, I don't think this is, thing is salvageable. I wouldn't like to sell it on to anyone. Um, so I think this is destined for the bin, which is unfortunate. Right, so as you can see, I've got my new headlight here and I'm basically just gonna plug it in first and hope that the light goes away on the dash before I like fit it 100% properly. So I'm just gonna fit the plug on. Plug doesn't wanna go on, that's not good. So I've actually <laughs> caused myself a new problem. This could have been avoided if I wasn't so heavy handed. The plastic could have just been so brittle that it wasn't been able to be helped, but the little clip that usually holds this onto the headlight um, has broken off. As you can see, as soon as I touched it with a screwdriver it just snapped clean off so this no longer stays on the headlight it just wants to push itself off and because this has got a seal in it it needs to be sort of held on and clipped on um the trouble with that is this is not really replaceable i don't think the loom runs all the way up into the dash i'm not even going to think about replacing the loom it's, it's just not going to happen um but to replace this plug you would need to cut all them wires i think and splice it all i don't know if this plug is like you can take it apart or anything I have no idea. I'm not very good with wiring and electrics, so this needs to be able to stay on the back of the headlight, and at the minute it won't because that clip's broke. So I don't really know what to do about that. That might have to wait, and uh, I'm gonna have to try and figure out a better way of fixing it, because I want it to be proper. I don't want to bodge it, but yeah, that's kind of annoyed me. So annoyingly, what it looks like I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to find someone that's breaking a Mondeo that's exactly this model with the adaptive headlights. They ask me if they can chop off the plug for me and I'm gonna have to solder it in, I think, and like put a whole new plug on it, which is completely not what I want to do because that's so much more work and time. However, I don't really see a way around it at the moment, so, hmm, that's gonna be fun. So whilst I'm deciding what I'm gonna do with the headlight situation, I figured I would start on another job, get another thing done, and that is the wing mirror. I'm gonna go ahead and replace this. I believe the door card needs to come off because um, that wiring goes down and it's behind the door card. Doesn't look like it's too bad, a few screws and stuff, and that should just pop off. Hopefully we can get to the wiring and we can change this thing out. I'm hoping that this is the correct mirror. There is a bunch of different ones with different wiring because there's different models, different specs. So some of them have heated mirrors, some of them don't. Some of them have the ability to fold in, some of them don't. So I'm hoping this is the same one. I'll compare the wiring when I get the old one out. But I'm gonna start by taking the door card off. So I'm pretty sure we've got, there's a screw here that I can see. I've seen a couple on the side there, there's a couple on the bottom, and I believe there's a couple behind this uh, silver trim on here as well. So I'm gonna pop that off and just see what's behind there. And uh, I think that's it, I think then it'll come off. So I suspected there's a couple of screws in here, there's a Torx there, Torx there. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, I think there's seven screws all together. Right, I think I've got all the screws out of this now, so it should hopefully just pull straight off. Remove this trim as well. Right, so that was easy enough to remove. Um, there was 
six screws around the outside. There was two on this side, two on the bottom, two on the left right side, and then there was two here, and then there was another one up there. So there was three, nine screws in total, and uh, that's come off nicely actually. This here is the plug for the mirror. As you can see, obviously it goes up to the mirror there. So that's the reason you need to take the door card off to get to it. So we can unplug that guy. I'm just going to double check that it's the right one. It looks to be the right one to me. Yeah, the wiring matches up on these. It's got the same amount of wires and they're all the same color, all in the same place. So I can be pretty comfortable that this is going to fit on there perfectly. Now to remove the mirror, we've just got one bolt, just like a little 10 mil there. So I'm going to undo that and the mirror should just pop straight off. that to the side and I'm just gonna basically just do the reversal stick the new one on all right we can go ahead and plug in our wiring in there lovely all right I'm just gonna hang this door card on there very gently I'm plugging the wiring again for our uh, switches and I'm just going to test the mirror make sure it all works before I put them back together it's the sensible thing to do right I'm going to go ahead and give the mirror a test quickly at the minute the mirror's unfolded you can see that one there I put the ignition on so let's just do the fold test first I'll press the button that's a good sign and open again yep so the fold action works that's good so let's just open them let's just switch over to our mirror to see if it moves it does I see that moving up and down yeah okay so we seem to have full function the only thing I can't really test right now is the uh, heated element because the mirror is heated that'll have to be something that I check a later date for the moment that folds in and the mirror moves that's kind of pretty much all I wanted anyway so that's fantastic <clears throat> I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, throw this door card back on put the screws back in Just a little quick tip for you, I found that WD-40 works a treat on getting this stuff that they put on at the breakers yard, this pen. It's quite stubborn, but WD-40 seems to break it down quite easily, so that's what I usually use. There you go. Good as new. As you can probably tell as well, I kind of got lucky on the colour match. I didn't actually realise it was the same blue. It looked a lot darker in the, um, the picture that on eBay that I bought it but that is actually the perfect colour and it's in good condition. No scratches or anything, so I'm happy about that. You can see as well, door card's all back on, all the screws have gone back in. Right, moving on to the next job. I want to try and figure out why water is getting in this boot. Obviously it's getting in through the boot area somewhere, but I need to figure out where it's coming from so that I can seal it up and then I can dry the boot out and then fix that whole issue. So there's only a few places that it can come through on the boot. So I'm gonna inspect them all, see if I can figure out where it's coming from and then hopefully fix it. Okay, so the boot of the car. Um, if water's getting in here, there's only a handful of places that it can be getting in. Um, the most common places I think are like the rear lights. So you've got a cluster here, a cluster here. Um, there's actually a light on the boot here, which I'll definitely take a look at. And then you've got the lights on the other side. And the only other place apart from that is it can come through the window, but that's very, very unlikely. And then also, if the seal around the boot, so this rubber thing here, if that seal is broken or damaged, which this one is perfectly in good condition, um, that could cause water to get in as well. So my theory for this is, um, the water seems to be getting in in the center of the boot. There doesn't seem to be any water on this side There also doesn't seem to be any moisture on this side. However, the moisture seems to be concentrated Right here in the middle as you can see it's on top of the wheel which means the likelihood of it coming through the lights Is so slim. I would actually put my money on this rear light being the problem purely because it's in the middle um, It does have a seal so it could leak through and then behind this plastic trim is the light just there and it could leak down through here and the seal sits below it so the water could still get in the boot. That's what I think has happened here, but I won't know until I can remove this rear trim. So I'm gonna take this off, just held on by a couple of screws and some clips um, and have a look behind there and see if I can see any telltale signs of uh, water ingress. So I finally managed to get the trim off. That was an absolute nightmare, that was. I can already see, having looked at this just briefly, you can see the rear of the lights. This is on the boot. 
there's one like there there's another one in there that's the center one and obviously you've got this one this side i can already see telltale signs of potential water can you see around that bolt you see the drip looking thing coming down it right there you can see where it's clean and where the water looks like water's been running down so that's a potential you can also see i don't know how well you can see it on the camera but there's also lines coming down from that center light can you see that where it looks like water's been running down that and then it's the same on this bolt here you can see like a water stream coming down That is a lot of water. <laughs> hey boy. Okay, so as you can see, I have dried up all of the water that was in here. We now have a nice dry, reasonably clean base to work with. Obviously I've taken the spare wheel out as you've seen. So this is now empty. So what my plan is, is I'm gonna shut the boot and I'm gonna get my hose and I'm gonna spray it around all the boot area, all over the car, on the rear. And I'm gonna have a look in here and see if I can figure out where this leak has come from. So far, I cannot, for the life of me, really tell, like, definitively where it's coming from. I could be doing all this and someone might have just spilt like a glass of water in there and just never cleared it up, but there was a heck of a lot of water in the bottom. Um, so it's definitely, I think, leaking in from somewhere. I just cannot figure out where. So as I said, I'm gonna simulate some rain and see if we can pinpoint where it's coming from. Well, so far, I can see nothing. <laughs> no sign of water at all, which is annoying and also confusing. I've just given that a good blast for two minutes straight all over this rear end here. That sounds awful. <laughs> yeah, boy. So let's just have another look inside see if we have anything i don't see anything this is so strange can you <laughs> i am flapping oh hang on oh hang on i see water there it's just now dripped down see that ah, i found you you bugger but where is the source that's the question right it seems like i've also got a problem over here can you see this the carpet is wet there and it's dripping down which ironically is where all the mold and stuff has been growing but where the heck is that coming from behind that plastic somewhere it's just started hailing as well look at the size of these That was a completely random hail shower. I've never seen hail that big in the UK before. How mad. All right, let's carry on with this boot. So, as you guys can see, we have the leak on this side. I have no idea where that would be coming, like, in and through, though. This. Oh, this. Do you reckon that's the problem? Where the wiring comes through for the, the rear wiper and stuff. It's all gunked up. And do you reckon that's not sealing properly? I think that's, oh yeah, I think that's the problem. I definitely think that's the problem. Because it'll be going through here, probably running down a bit. And then, I don't know actually, that's really high up there, isn't it? So there's actually a wire on this side as well, on the driver's side, there's two. I wonder if they could both be the source of the leak on this side, but also the leak on that side. I wonder if I put some water directly around these, uh, whether we'd get a, a leak, you can see there's a bunch of gunk build up around these. And also, you know, they're not, they're not the most secure thing in there. In fact, I think they're supposed to be in there a bit further. Water's running directly onto that. So you should, if this is the problem, see a, an increase in water down here. I've got water dripping out of there now. That wasn't there before. Okay, that's definitely our issue. On both sides, I would say. Both those things are leaking. Right, I'm gonna have to try and figure out how to seal these up. So I have managed to pry out the seal. This is what it looks like, you can see 
um, how gungy it is and how wet it is so it's definitely water been getting past that I think the water then runs down the wiring which then runs down here and the wiring actually you can visibly see it through this hole so it runs down the actual wires themselves which is dangerous in it, uh, as it is and uh, and then drips out there which I think is also what's happening on the other side and what I'm thinking is the seal actually feels pretty good it's still rubbery and stuff so I'm thinking that if I give it a really good clean and then put it back in so that the mating surfaces and that are all you know and free free of any of this grime so that might be enough to seal it if not I might have to go in there and put some like um, tiger seal or something in there and seal it that way but first off I'll give it a clean and I'll see if that does anything right I'm gonna utilize my yum citrus because that'll probably be quite good at breaking down some of this grime Right, so I've cleaned up the seal. Hope you can see that. It's all now squeaky clean. That citrus did a fantastic job of uh, getting rid of all that. I don't know if you can see, this is the bottom piece. The seal actually looks a little bit damaged on the bottom there. Uh, it looks like it's like folded over for some reason. The rest of it looks okay. There's no splits in it or anything like that. So I've cleaned the surface as well. You can hopefully you can see that. I've cleaned the surface, cleaned the rubber. I'm gonna put it back on in the hopes that that is enough to uh, warrant not leaking anymore. But if not, I'll have to do a little bit more work to it. Nope, that ain't done it. Still leaking through there, unfortunately. Okay, so unfortunately, that hasn't worked. I've cleaned both sides, refitted the seals, sprayed water on them, and both of them still leak which is a shame i was hoping that was going to be the fix the next thing i'm going to try though is adding some black silicone sealant to them the trouble is it looks like it's going to hail on me as it has been all day as you've seen um, it looks like it's about to hail again because there's a dark cloud looming right there um, i'm going to seal all around the seal with this squish them back down and hopefully uh, that'll do the job right so i've sealed up the left hand side hopefully you can see that it's a little bit messy it's not the, the neatest job i've done but i want it to work I don't really care how it looks particularly. Basically what I've done is I've dried off the area, used a heat gun just to warm it up and get rid of any water or anything. And then I've literally just put a bead of silicone around it using this stuff and uh, stuck it down. That's it's quite simple really. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this other side real quick, get that done. As I said, it doesn't look the best, but I can always tidy it up afterwards. They have been smothered in uh, sealant so if that doesn't seal it then i give up i'm gonna give them a quick test just pour some water over them like i was see if we've got any leaks i don't think we will um, and then we can call that fixed done and i can pull this back together right let's do passenger side first so i just went ahead and poured essentially that whole bottle of water over the area and as you can probably see we have got zero water coming into the car. Fantastic. Right, and on the driver's side, as I suspected, absolutely zero water coming out of there now. No more drips coming down. Fantastic. This boot is now completely water sealed and we shouldn't be getting any more water in here. Okay, so I've been going at the boot for about 10 minutes and it's not perfect, but it's looking a heck of a lot better than it did. You can see the carpet on the side is looking a lot cleaner, a lot neater, demolded, which is good. As you will have seen, my choice of demolder is actually white vinegar. I find that it is the safest and uh, like it's got the least amount of chemicals in it when it comes to removing mold and I, it seems to do a really good job. The mold never comes back. I've used it on multiple cars now. Vinegar is the like the least harsh way of doing it chemical wise uh, if you're doing it in your car especially you don't really want chemicals all in your fabrics and stuff especially if you've got children and that going about but this is now looking a lot better i've cleaned all the wheel well out as you can see 
everywhere is just looking a heck of a lot fresher which is good the only thing i need to do is to refit the wheel and the spare uh, tools and that and then i've got to hoover the carpet as well which i'll do off camera but yeah it looks a lot better i'm very happy with it and it's not going to leak anymore which is the best thing So I think I've now spent enough time in this boot. Um, I'm very happy with how it now looks. Models have been treated. Um, the moisture problem has obviously been treated. I'm not gonna get any more water in here. Result. So the next thing I've got to do is this battery box. Um, the one that I took off this when I was doing the clutch came off in many bits. Uh, if I show you on this one, this flap here, which shows you the positive terminal under there. This was snapped off. There was a snapped off bit here on my other one. Uh, so I found this on eBay. It was like 15 pounds, I think. And it comes with the whole thing. I don't need the tray underneath, but I do need all the plastics on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up quickly and get it put on there. That stands out like an absolute sore thumb. I cleaned it with Yum Undress and then put some uh, Yum Dressing on it, this stuff, which is fantastic for plastics and stuff. But it looks so odd in there now. Right, so we are now jumping back onto the front of the car and we're gonna be working on this headlight issue. As you guys would have seen, I removed the old watery headlight. That damaged the connectors on the back of the headlight, which in turn had damaged the plug on the actual car. The actual loom itself is not looking good. It's not in very good condition. And it's also a broken clip. So what I've done to remedy this problem is I've actually bought myself a new plug. This is a 14 pin connector. Um, it's already got all the wires and stuff on it. I will leave this in the description just in case you need to do this yourself. But as you can see, it's a brand new one. It's not a genuine Ford one or anything, but it'll do the job. Essentially, I need to splice all of these wires into the existing loom here. So I need to cut all these ones, cut these ones, splice them together, and hopefully we'll have our lights all working again. You can unpin these connectors, pull the wires out the back, and just put them into the new connector. However, because this headlight has had a water issue and because these connectors are fairly rusty and crusty, I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut this plug off and wire in this new one. All I need to do is pull this sleeve back uh, to expose the wires, and then I'm gonna cut them one by one. I'm not gonna just like chop the plug off. I'm gonna splice one wire, splice it into the new connector, splice another wire, put it into the one, just so I know where they all go. The last thing I want is to get these all confused and not know where the wires go. So that is today's job. To do it, to connect the wires to the wires, I've actually picked up a new set of connectors, and these are the self-soldering heat shrink connectors. You guys may have seen these before, but I don't want to drop them. Don't drop them. Essentially what they are is a, a sleeve, um, and in the middle there, that silver ring, is actually a low temperature solder. Um, and what you do is you splice the wires together, twist them together, put this over it, heat up with a heat gun, which I've got set up down there, and then the solder will melt into the wires, and then these blue bits will seal it up and it will shrink down onto the wire and it will connect the wires together. They're a nice easy way, oh goodness me, of wiring bits together. I've never used them before, but I've seen them used. They should do the job. Like I said, I'm gonna go wire at a time and uh, get this new plug wired into the car. Right, I don't know how well you can be able to see this because the sun is bright today, but I've just done my first couple. There's these two here, you can see where I've connected them. These little um, connectors are absolutely fantastic. They're so easy to use. You just slide it onto the wire, strip two ends of the wire, um, twist them together, put the sleeve over, use the heat gun, which is down there, just to heat up a little bit. And that solder is, you know, it melts at such a low temperature that the heat gun is enough to melt it. And I don't know if you've got to see this very well, but the solder has flowed all through the wire. It's heat shrunk down, so it's waterproof. And those two are now fully connected. So that's the new plug here. So we've got our first two wires on. Like I said, I'm just going through one by one, just snipping one wire at a time. Um, they're not the same color, so I just want to make sure I get it right. So I'm just making sure that, you know, I line up each wire with each wire on the same plug. And... Uh, yeah, I've just got 10 more to go and this plug will be wired in. I'll obviously tape all this up and make sure it's all, you know, neat and tidy and, and looks factory again once I'm done with it. So I'm going to carry on.
was watching. It's the end of the world. Illuminati is coming. Gather the boys and girls and watch as it all unfurls. They clutching it all their pearls and no one asking for guidance. Stimulus check, won't you catch? Right, so here's the new plug that I've just now wired in. Here's all the connections. You can see they're all soldered and heat shrinked. Very happy with them. They worked an absolute treat, those little things. Highly recommend if you've got something to wire in using them. It's a lot quicker than um, soldering, but it's also, I think, I would say it's quicker than crimping um, or very similar speed. And I think you get a better connection because obviously you've got solder in there. It's not the neatest thing in the world, but I'm going to go ahead and tape all this up now and just put the shrouding and stuff back on it. And then uh, we can actually do the test and see if the headlight is going to work now. Tell me you wouldn't think that was just factory, look at that. I think that looks pretty good to be honest with you. You'd never know that all these wires have just been spliced in. So that is now the final result. Just need to clip it back onto the car. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the headlight now. And uh, we'll test all the bulbs and all the functions to make sure everything works. The actual plug has gone onto the uh, headlight really nicely. It's clicked on there. So that's good. Right, I'm going to just sit it there and just turn it on and just test it. The ignition on. And just turn the lights on as well. Oh, I see lights. That's a good sign. Headlights on. Side lights on. Let's just check indicators. Yeah. Now what I do want to test is our headlight malfunction light that comes on the dashboard. So I'm going to turn the car on and see if that comes on. We'll just press OK on that. Driver's door open, which it is. Service oil, which I know. Well, it doesn't look like we've got a headlight come on there anymore. No, fantastic. It tells me that the headlights are on as well. That's really cool. See that little image look ready? Well, I'm trying to turn the headlights on. Little beam comes on. <laughs> That's pretty neat, I like that. But no headlight warning whatsoever. So that has completely fixed that, which I thought it would. Fantastic stuff. So the headlight works, the plug works, and we've got rid of the light on the dashboard. Success. I'm really happy with how that went. I'm not much of a wiring guy. I don't really like doing wiring at the best of times. In terms of difficulty, that wasn't, you know, it wasn't particularly hard. Just cut one wire, connect to the next, cut one wire. But I, ma I managed to get all the wires right. And these things were fantastic. What a great little piece of kit these are. Highly recommend if you do any wiring at all, um, grab some of these. If you've used these yourself, let me know what you thought of them. I thought they were going to be a bit of a gimmick, but they actually worked really well. So there is the new headlight in. As you can see, it looks a heck of a lot better than the old one with all the orange tint in. It now matches the other side. Makes the front end look a lot, lot fresher. Right, I just want to show you this real quick. It's darker now, so you can actually see the headlights and stuff working. I'm going to turn the ignition on. The lights are on, the auto lights. Turn that on. You can see them move there. They do like a little, you know, a little function where they just show you that they're working. I'll do it one more time, I'll zoom in a bit. If you look on the back of that car there, they do like that little movement thing. So the last little job that I want to do to this car real quick, so the last little job that I want to do to the Mondeo today is just to change these number plates out. They look a little bit sad. I've got my nice shiny new gel plates to put on. Um, it shouldn't take a moment. I think we can all agree that they look so much better than the plates that were on there. Really digging the gel plates. And that, boys and girls, is where I'm going to end today's video. I managed to get all the jobs done on the Mondeo that I wanted to today. There's not really a lot left to do on this thing apart from get it through an MOT, so that is what I'm going to be doing next. I'm going to ring up and book this in. Hopefully, it'll go through, touch wood, with absolutely no problems. And then uh, all it needs is a clean, 
and it'll be ready to go. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you have, make sure you leave the video a like. I just want to give a quick shout out once more to Roller Plates for sending out the number plates to me. I might be contacting them again to get some uh, fancy plates for my Astra. I kind of like the look of the crystal plates and I think they'll suit the Astra quite nicely. But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, well done to you. I know it was a long one. Hope you guys enjoyed. The next video you'll see on this thing is me cleaning it and then taking it for an MOT. So look forward to that. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.